welcome to the Skill Work Forum again. As always, my name is Tim. I'm joined with my partner here at Skill Work, Brett, and uh, we appreciate your time joining us here today. As you know, here at the Skill Work Forum, we talk about all kinds of issues, trends, impacts to industries and businesses uh, surrounding the skilled trades. And today, um, we're approaching, believe it or not, I can't believe it's already happened, the end of this year. 2021 has just went screaming by, but we always try to take a crystal ball look ahead at that coming year. So in today's episode, we're actually, I think we're going to break it up into two. We're going to, we're going to talk about the things that we see, uh, some of the trends, some of the needle movers, if you will, uh, for the businesses out there and also for the men and women that are in the skilled trades or um, use folks that are in the skilled trades to advance your business. So uh, we'll, we'll try to our best to take a look at those things that are going to impact you from a business perspective. And we think probably the surest way to predict what's going to happen is to take a look what has happened, what's currently happened, and more specifically, kind of what things are beginning to emerge, what things are beginning to have an impact now that will persist into the coming year. So what are the things that impacted us in 2021 and the things that will impact you and us in the coming year? So we've identified what we think are eight factors, eight trends that we're going to discuss over this two-part uh, segment of the Skill Work Forum, and I'm just going to summarize them here uh, that, that over the, the next uh, two episodes that we'll get into more detail on. But at a high level, we're going to talk about, obviously, the skilled labor shortage, and really where we see that going. And uh, spoiler alert, we see that continuing and probably getting uh, more acute for you in the coming year. The second thing is this baby boomer exodus, uh, which we believe is going to be both a brain and an experience drain to your company. So we, we see that continuing to be a significant trend. Uh, the third thing that we'll talk about is this growing demand of your workers for more flexibility in the workplace. And what effect is that going to have on your business? Fourth, this concept of replacement as a big driver in your labor um, strategy. And by replacement, we're talking about not just people that leave uh, out of attrition or you have to hire because your business has grown, but this is a concept called replacement that we'll talk about that's going to impact more and more of the skilled trades. Uh, we'll be talking about automation of the workplace. That's going to be a continuing trend, the impact to your business from that perspective. Rising costs and inflation fears, which we see definitely on the horizon, the impact of the labor market as a result of that. This supply chain backlog, that's the seventh thing that we'll talk about. The supply chain backlog and really this growing consumer demand and how that's going to impact your business. It already is. It will continue to do so in some interesting ways. And then finally, this um, infrastructure, we'll call it an infrastructure bill uh, that's been passed and uh, the impact that that could have, particularly in the construction sector. So with that, Brett, uh, I said a lot to tee us up there, but the Good. first one that we're going to talk about over to you. All right. So, well, like Tim said, you know, uh, Kind of a, a spoiler alert, but if uh, if you thought the labor shortages were were all of a sudden in 2022, we're all going to go away. I think uh, I think you're going to have a bad year. So uh, so obviously, you know, it's an obvious the the labor shortage in in total. You know, from the service industry to pretty much every business is is struggling in that area. And skilled trades, which is what we're going to focus on, as we always do, um, is is definitely, uh, you know, going to going to continue to experience that same same issue. And so, you know, the I think the uh, the demand and the opportunity uh, that that's creating really for the skilled trades is is new skills, you know, a lot of what you're going to we're going to talk about in, in, in this episode and, and even some in, in, in the part two of this is, is what those trends are and what kind of where the opportunities are. If you're, if you're a business, you know, this is creating a lot of challenges as to how you're going to address it. If you're a, if you're a skill worker, this is actually, you know, we, we, I don't know that we coined the term, uh, but it's, you know, the kind of the golden age for the skilled labor. I mean, right now the demand is so strong um, for, for skilled trades. I mean, just in probably, Tim, I would say, I think a year and a half ago, 
um, across our system of what we see of technicians and, and a lot of guys, maintenance technicians in the manufacturing space and so forth and so on. You know, I think probably 18 to 24 months ago, probably the average wage we saw was $24, $25 yeah. an hour. And and this year, I mean, in, in a relatively short period of time, I just looked the other day and our average across the system uh, was was up to about 27 now with with uh, even a, a higher increase in the higher jobs. We're seeing a lot more um, automation technicians and and PLC type type roles where you're yeah. getting up up well into the thirty dollar range. So we've definitely seen a seen a movement and a shift in in better wages. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> and and I think that trend is going to definitely continue and. It's, we'll talk about this as well. It, it, it's producing for you, you know, maybe uh, the, the likes that we haven't seen in quite a while, a very, very competitive environment uh, for those skilled workers. And it's going to take a, a change in mindset to be able to address this labor shortage because it's going to it's going to continue to put stress on your current workforce because mm-hmm. uh, demand, as we talk about, is increasing. Yep. Most COVID demand is you know, is is unprecedented. Yeah. So it's yep. going to exacerbate that issue. Well, there's no doubt. I mean, you, you're going to have to. I mean, we've already had to do it. I mean, our whole business, you know, at skill work exists, you know, because of the demand and, and needing to think outside of the box as to how you're going to find the talent and get it there. I think that that reality for companies um, to really find the demand. I mean, you know, the number of companies that we work with, and the search for talent is just off the charts as far as trying to find not just not just individuals to put into spots, but really finding talent. No and and yeah. we'll get more into it, you know, probably in the next episode when we talk about the the fourth industrial revolution, the expansion of automation, but also just the the level of skill and what's happening. You know, the other thing, Tim, that we're seeing um, happen is. You know the you know the the 24 month elephant in the room. You know COVID. You know has created a, a lot of dynamics. Obviously, that's not over. You know we're continuing to deal with that. Uh, we'll probably talk a little bit. We'll weave it in here a little bit. But obviously, you know the the vaccine mandates and OSHA, which right now, as we're filming this, you know that's been put on on pause for the moment. But you know that that. That fight, wherever wherever you land on that, is not over, um, and that's going to have. We'd be remiss in saying that's not going to have an impact yeah. in here um, somewhere and how it affects your workforce. Um, but the other thing that that I think COVID has has clearly done it is it has created uh, a more moving workforce. You people are for a variety of reasons. They're they're either leaving certain parts of the country um, um, and, and moving. And part of that is because a lot of a lot of people too now let's 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 be let's just say that we've got a uh, we've got a maintenance individual, a, a guy or a gal, whatever the case may be, and their spouse is now able to work remote, uh, which we're seeing a lot. And so suddenly, Hey, they, they they can be they can move they can go right. or they're choosing to go whatever the case so that that mobility and freedom to move around is creating a unique dynamic of, yeah it is and you know we'll we'll talk a little bit more about workplace flexibility and that's a big yep. part of it and and just to um, kind of complete or or add a little bit more to your thought about COVID and you know we're not going to get into you know the the where you stand on that. I think that a, a prudent business will look to, you know, consider what are the potential outcomes of that. One of which is if that is, uh, you know, corporately mandated that you're going to pursue that, whether it gets made legal or not, that's going to have an impact on your workforce because the bottom line is, certain workers will be okay with that and certain workers will not, and that could, you know, further. Uh, put additional stress and strain on your workforce if people choose to, you know, transition because of that. And then we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit in this uh, replacement. I think that could increase replacement demand as mm-hmm. well. So uh, a lot of things are going to they're going to drive labor shortage. One of them is it's our next our next point. 
uh, that we're talking about. It's kind of related, but it, it's it's it was happening before the the what what's impacted us the last couple of years, and it's going to continue. I think it's been accelerated, and this is what we call the baby boomer exodus, and it, it's no um, you know surprise or secret that we have an aging workforce across all uh, sectors, but. It's even more acute in those that um, rely on skilled trades. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a brain drain, but really for those of us that work in the skilled trades industry, more important than that, because you can teach somebody, you know, send them to, you know, two years, 18 months, and they can learn, you know, that what the book says about PLC, mm -hmm. but the experience to know how to apply that in a troubleshooting environment where you, you depend on somebody to know what to do, when to do it. It's uh, that experience drain is gonna be a significant factor, we think, in the next year and the coming year. So according to um, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, approximately one third of all skill workers are over the age of 50. Um, and even, let's take a look at a, a particular sector we work in construction. Those who work in the construction trades and, and this particular um, statistic that was pulled out looked at construct, construction and building inspectors. So let's just take that job. The median age for that job is 53. Um, and the median age for all other jobs is almost a decade, it's 42. So they're 10 years older in that trade. And I think that's pretty accurate across a lot of construction and even manufacturing. So. You have that percentage of people on the upper end of that that are close to and could be considering retirement. We know for certain that the COVID actually accelerated some of that, you know, people leaving early. Um, conversely, only 10% of, of this group that I just talked about are under the age of 25. So you've got a large group that are older and a very small group that's coming up to replace them. So. That is a that is a significant issue in this baby baby boomer. And speaking as two baby boomers, right? You know, <laughs> we get it, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. You can't retire, but that's all right. But the uh, the um, but no, it's a very true fact. You know, we talk about it. I think we've talked about it in a previous in a previous uh, uh, episode. You know, we 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 call it the COVID exit, and and the COVID exit. You know. Um, meaning people of the baby boomer age that maybe were at the top end of that, you know, mid 60, you know, range who just said, you know, in, in the current environment, I'm, I'm, I think the industry, we as industry leaders thought that a lot of those individuals that were 64, 65, we could probably convince them to work till they were maybe 67, 68. We were trying to push that along, trying to, because we, we, everybody has seen this, this train come and add us for a while and trying to figure out how to get ahead of it. And, and, and COVID, you know, the, the people that decided, you know, it's just not worth it for me to stay. I'm just going to go ahead and retire. That definitely had an impact. I think we're going to continue potentially to see that. I, there was an article, I don't remember exactly where we read it um, recently, um, not just in the skilled trades, but across all, all, all workforce that uh, over the next five years, uh, 10,000 baby boomers a day will, will leave the workforce. Um, so because they're reaching age. So that's a significant impact. We'll talk about it a little bit more, you know, here when we get done in the replacements and other stats that, that, that really kind of drive home the impact. You know, I'm in, in facilities all the time, you know, um, and that my role here, I do a lot, deal with a lot of the clients, and so um, it, it, Tim, I don't know the last time I went to a client where this conversation um, about their aged maintenance staff and the reality of 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 them retiring and leaving and the challenge to find the talent behind it. I mean, it's not like I've got to convince them. They are quite aware of the of, of the problem. Yeah, so. I mean, some of the statistics are pretty staggering, and you know, uh, one that we that we picked up on is that this is a projection, uh, and you know, it also applies to our next our next uh, trend that we see. But 
By 2030, by one projection, almost 80 million skilled tradesmen will have retired. And there's only projected to be 40 million to replace them. Yeah, that's so, a scary number. I mean, I'm from Arkansas, but I can do that, man. <laughs> yeah. So that's a scary number. Now, yeah. So you're saying, yeah, that's a big deal. We all know that. But here's the thing. I've been in the workforce for a while, and this has been a topic that's been discussed in all sorts of sectors. But it gets talked about, and everybody agrees, but what are you doing about it? Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, it, now it's here. We, t- we do a lot of risk mitigation here, which was, hey, this thing could happen. Well, it, it's here. We're in the middle of it. It got accelerated. So your five to 10 year strategic planning, that just got moved up, you know, like today. You've got to take care of today. And here's one thing I would just caution, because I've been through, uh, you know, a high demand for a particular skill set in a, in a, in a previous uh, life. And in our rush to try to acquire new talent and younger talent and replacement talent, There's a tendency to forget those guys Mm -hmm. that are out there doing it and have been doing it for a long time. So there's a sense that, wait a minute, these guys are getting hiring bonuses. They're getting, you know, extra vacation. They're getting treated like rock stars. What about me? I've been here, you know, working for this company for years. So my caution to you, having lived through that, is make sure you pay attention to those guys and in your haste to fix this problem, which is a necessity, don't forget those guys because yep. you'll just push them out the door. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. It's like, uh, you know, it's like a politician who, you know, forgets, forgets their base trying to, to trace, chase the, you know, the, the new voters. So you got to you got to remember your workforce. And that's a lot of, you know, what we're, you know, we're, we're talking about here. You know, we're, we're talking about it, you know, like you said, Tim, these labor shortages and the baby boom exodus, and these are things that we've seen for a couple years. You know, what we're basically saying, you know, is it's going to continue um, probably a little bit, maybe even accelerated. Um, I think we've already seen that in, in 2021. Um, so, but I think, you know, like, like Tim said, as, as, as companies, leaders, and business leaders, as you're looking at this, then you say, okay, well, Okay, you know, so what what do I do? And so so obviously this idea of you have to start thinking differently as how you're going to attract the talent for one thing. But then also once you get that talent, one of the things that that that, that we're seeing and reading um, as a as a definite trend um, as we head into 22 and on is is this workplace flexibility. So I think companies are going to have to really the traditional idea that this is the shift, these are the days, this is what it is, all those kinds of things, I th- you're going to have to think about ways to make it um, just more flexible, you know, whether that's split shifts, um, they talk about things like flexible PTO. One of the things that I think is maybe one of the uh, more interesting ones, you know, we have, we have, uh, we have two young ladies here on on our staff who, um, uh, what's the right word, Tim? Time they share. They job share. They job share. Yeah. And so, so they're both part time. We're not probably talking part time, and and obviously in these facilities and whatnot, but they have the ability to, you know, they job share and they kind of can. That way, it, it it works for both of them. If we told both of them, hey, you got to be full time, they'd be like, well, this doesn't work for me. We wouldn't have either. We of them. We wouldn't have either. And so. Instead, we have two very talented, very gifted, you know, individuals on our team because of our ability to do that. I think you're going to see it's 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 unique and it's unusual. You know, I spent 30 plus years, you know, in the manufacturing space. And if somebody would have told me, well, you got to do this, you got to do that. I'd be like, no, I'm not doing that. And no, so right. but but now you just can't be that stubborn. You yeah. Know? And I mean, just to just to underpin what Brett's saying, this workplace flexibility is you know, that's what we, it's, and if you're following these, that's what we see as our, our third trend. And I mean, it's been around in other industries, but mm-hmm. I think you're right, Brad. Even the idea of, you know, job sharing for somebody on your, let's let's take a manufacturing space on your maintenance team. Why wouldn't you consider if I have two baby boomer guys who know how to fix everything, but they're, they're at a place right now where they only want to work 20, 25 hours a week. 
and you get two of those guys yeah. and they can share that job, wouldn't you rather have that than have both of them walk? I mean, it's it, things like that you got to consider and think about. Yeah, I think you're going to have to. I think things like, you know, one of the, the terms I hear out there is swappable shifts. You know, a lot of these facilities, you know, a lot of the plants that we have have skill workers in, you know, they're two, two, three facilities, which basically means it's a seven day operation, you know, working, you know, uh, uh, 12 hour shifts, you know, one week you work three days, the next week you work four, it's a, it's a big rotation schedule. It's a way to accommodate a plant working seven days without individuals working seven days. But always in all of these facilities, the hardest shifts to fill are always the night shifts. Yeah. And so, so, but creating maybe some flexibility, you know, where two individuals or multiple individuals on a team can actually say, hey, can you cover for me, you know, you know, back when you used to wait tables, you know, if, if, if you, if you needed, you could have the day off as long as you can find somebody that could cover for you, you know, you know, some of that flexibility. I know it's not as easy and a lot of it is just because just like Tim and I, we can become pretty rigid in our the way we want to do things. Um, but I think just being able to create some environments, whatever that is, I don't know exactly how it works in different facilities, but that the ability, you know, some split shifts, sharing time, flexible PTO, swappable shifts, for example, like I said, if you have a guy that says, hey, I got to be off this Saturday, well, you know, he can get another guy to cover for him, ki kinds of things. All of that is going to, gonna, you know, along with the ability to be more mobile and to be able to have a little more ability to move around. Yeah, like I said, in a, in a previous career where I was, you know, doing a lot of uh, very time-sensitive project management, delivery of products, and we had a lot of high-tech engineers working on the projects, and... At the time, there, the demand for these guys was extremely high, and we had to get very creative with how we could not only recruit but retain. And a lot of the traditional things that, hey, we all show up and work from 7 to 5, we had to get very creative and, and allow everything from, you know, uh, a tire, which, you know, doesn't apply in some industries, yeah. but to shifts and you know, availability and, you know, all kinds of creative creative things. So staying in the current paradigm that you are with your workforce and how you manage them and the environment we're going in is going to guarantee you that you're going to struggle a lot more against your competitors that are more forward leaning for this um, for the workforce. It's just guaranteed. It's supply and demand and it's going to be you're going to have to rethink a lot of your strategy. And also a lot of the, your five-year or further projections that are, are, are currently in your planning for labor needs. We think that that's going to accelerate. So anything else on workplace flexibility? No, I don't think so. All right. So um, the next thing we mentioned already a couple of times. So the fourth thing is this concept of replacement, which, you know, we all know what it is, but, you know, now that now it's kind of being talked about more. So replacement as a driver for your workforce for your for your labor staff uh, projections now are there or let's define it first so replacement is rather than attrition or so natural attrition you lose guys you always have you know whatever your attrition rate is so that happens for a variety of reasons everybody's aware of that so you have to replace those guys you know that and then there's also my business is growing so business growth I, I need more people to, to drive that. So this concept of replacement is something that other industries have dealt with, but now in skilled trades it's become more and more of a thing. Brett's alluded to it, that your workers are going to be leaving and you're going to have to replace the workers that you had no, you didn't anticipate, there was nothing in your projection that they were planning on leaving. So this idea of replacement, most uh, Economists that look into the workforce and labor trends have said that replacement will outpace growth and attrition as the drive for labor in the coming decade. So uh, it's going to be an increasing challenge. How are you going to replace workers who are leaving those jobs? And it's going to be, as we said, a very competitive market. So think about it right now. Many of you out there are doing all sorts of creative recruiting. 
And there's things that are called, you know, poaching from your competitors. Uh, I've heard it called sniping. You know, so your workers out there that are in these high demand jobs, they are being actively recruited right now by other uh, em- employers and even firms, um, you know, that are less scrupulous maybe than we are, <laughs> that are actively recruiting your skilled tradesmen to give to your competitor down the road. That's going on. And these guys who apparently, in a normal scenario, you would expect them to be there forever. They, they, like, their, they like their job. You know, they're getting paid well. Apparently, everything looks good. And next thing you know, they put in their two weeks notice or they just drop their tools off because they don't like their supervisor and out the door they go. Mm-hmm. And that's going to that's gonna happen. So you're going to have to re- anticipate a certain percentage of your labor force has to be replaced. And here's a statistic along those lines. In this coming year, in 2022, here's a projection that two out of every three job openings are expected to be for replacing workers that leave an occupation, sometimes in the same occupation, but sometimes in an adjacent occupation. We're seeing a lot of that. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. No, I think this is a big... This is a this is a tough reality. I mean, we I just think about I mean, we have some clients who who they pay very well. Uh, the facilities are are well run, very clean, um, and they're dealing with with this um, more than they ever have to a point where I think it's almost you know we we talk about it you know you know our our business you know we we're, we're a travel staffing company for skilled trades you know we recognized some of this I'm not you know of what was happening and 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 brought a solution you know to the marketplace and one of the in the early times you know Tim a lot of clients would they saw. Our guys coming in who basically assimilate into their teams, it was almost like, well, yeah, but they're not they're not permanent yeah. guys. Now they may become permanent guys, but now the reality is, and I always used to say it without trying to sound too, you know, you know, pushback, but was that what makes you think your current guys are so permanent? I mean, it's not like, you know, they're not indentured yeah. servants, you know. And now, unfortunately, that reality has become much larger to them in that they are even very well-paying jobs, very well-respected companies are seeing, you know, a guy's leaving. I just talked to a client the other day. I mean, they're losing $35 an hour automation tax getting poached by another company across town in a different industry at $42 an hour. And guess what? They're leaving. And and so so the idea that um, you know that you got to you just have to look at it a little bit differently in this in this replay because they are going to leave. People are leaving jobs at record numbers partially because they can. Unfortunately, there's not as much loyalty to stay in one location. And, and so with that, you as, a, as an employer or as a business leader, in order to, to make sure that your facility is running as efficiently as it can or your construction site or whatever your space is, I mean, you have to really think about how am I going to attract that talent? And does that talent really need, do I need to be as hung up on the idea that they're going to be here for 20 years? Yeah. I, just I think, think you got to get past that. You got to get past that. It's just a, it's just a fact. And you know, this, this topic of we've heard before, you know, workers aren't loyal anymore. And here's, here's a hard truth as well, is that there's an example when, where we, where we are headquartered here, a fortune 150 company, that for years had the reputation of being, hey, we're going to take care of our people long term. And, the, and as a result, their employees were very loyal to them. That paradigm changed in the last three to five years where that loyalty to employees was not there anymore due to pressures for business pressures that they felt they had to do things. So the idea that m- many skill workers we talk about Loyalty is a two-way street, mm-hmm. so there's no, there's not that reciprocal loyalty that happens in the workplace anymore. They're savvy, and they realize that 
if business trends go at one direction or other, their job is tenuous. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that doesn't speak to all of you. Many of you are very loyal to your employees, and, you know, we try to do the same. But that's what they hear, and that's what they see, and that's what they're, they, it's reflected to them in, in our constant media overload of information. So there's an idea that there is no security. It's, it's just every man for himself sort of mm -hmm. thing. So the opportunity is there. And recruiters that go after these guys are very persuasive in giving them, showing them the opportunity. So it goes back to our previous point. Be careful that you're continually recruiting your current staff. You're continually thinking about what do I need to do to recruit them to stay. Uh, think about a professional athlete, at, you know, a professional sports team. Mm -hmm. You know, those guys for their for their star athletes, they spend as much time and effort making sure they sign and retain those guys as they do the the, the current crop of uh, you know of new draft picks. So it's similar. We got to we got to just change our mindset a little bit. Yeah. No. Nope. So, Anything else on, on that replacement thought, Brett? No, I, I, you know, I mean, the replacement, like you said, is, 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 is the fact that people are leaving typically the Eugene's back. But, but it, part of this, you know, it's exasperated by the, the, the reality that some of the, the, the stats that I think Tim mentioned one earlier, and it kind of feeds into this, this whole thing that really elevates it to a whole different level, but, you know, that, you know, uh, you know that right now they're saying you know three tradesmen will retire um, over the next several years, and there's only one one tradesman to replace, who's to replace them. And and those facts, and the, you said earlier about by 2030, 80 million skilled tradesmen were going to retire, and there's only 40 million. Those those numbers kind of somewhat correlate. Um, the fact is, um, in simple terms. There's more leaving than that's coming behind them, and you better, uh, as a business owner, um, you better be figuring out how you're going to attract the ones you need. Um, so, and we know a lot of skilled tradesmen wa watch these as well. And you know, you you guys, as you know, here at Skillwork, we have we have three basic core values here that we're very you know uh, keen to follow and talk about. Our first is we honor God in everything we do. Our second core value, though, is we we intend to always bring value and, and respect to our skilled tradesmen. We believe that you deserve that. So I think this concept needs to be further embraced that it's not just something that you say, but you, the idea that you men and women out there that do this job, you keep America running. You're crucial to what we do. And there is a there is a need, and it's 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 deserved that you should be respected in what you do. But I would also caution that it, it sometimes the, the grass isn't always greener on the other side of the hill. That there is a there is a risk of transitioning. So there's both sides of this coin. But as we, as we speak to you as a business owner thinking about this thing, you definitely need to consider that coming up. So uh, let the, so the four that we covered here in this first half is. Just to re re recap, skilled labor shortage, which we talked about in a couple of different facets here, that's going to increase. Part of it is this baby boom exodus, not only a brain, but an experience drain. The third one is workplace flexibility, greater demand for that and creativity around that. And then finally, replacement, this replacement topic for current workers will outpace growth and attrition. So. We have four more that we're going to talk about uh, for next year, uh, the trends that we think will be coming. So, so please uh, take a look at the next podcast episode after that. Uh, in the meantime, thank you for joining us here. For, for Brett, I'm Tim from Skillwork. God bless and have a great day.